Welcome to Freedom Through Self-Knowledge from the Book of Life by Jiddu Krishnamurti, Vegetarian on Words of Wisdom. Jiddu Krishnamurti was an internationally renowned spiritual figure born in 1895 in southern India who to this present day is still considered one of the greatest thinkers and spiritual teachers of all time. He did not proclaim any religion, sect or country and always pointed out that we are first humans and do not need to identify with nationality or religious beliefs. From 1929 until his death in 1986, Jiddu Krishnamurti travelled throughout the world talking to large audiences, individuals, scientists, religious figures, writers, philosophers, educators, as well as giving radio and television interviews. Krishnamurti's message emphasized the great need of a radical change for humankind. His deep insights on the nature of the human mind enabled him to deliver his talks in a fresh and direct way, making audience members feel like he was addressing them personally. Krishnamurti's only concern was to set humanity absolutely, unconditionally free. His vision was for humans to have a more profound understanding of themselves and of the art of living so as to bring about a new and peaceful generation. A compassionate vegetarian, the beloved Krishnamurti was also a founder of schools in India, the United States and the United Kingdom. They are based on a holistic, global outlook with a concern for humanity and the environment and their interconnected relationship. The schools were established to be places where the existential concerns of life could be explored freely and responsibly. In addition, Jiddu Krishnamurti was an author of numerous books. Among them are The Awakening of Intelligence, The Urgency of Change, Freedom from the Known and The Flight of the Eagle. Let us now continue with the reading of excerpts from Jiddu Krishnamurti's book, The Book of Life. The philosopher's keen perception of the nature of the human mind points out a major aspect in our psychological life which would influence the experience of real self-knowledge. Free at the beginning. If we can understand the compulsion behind our desire to dominate or to be dominated, then perhaps we can be free from the crippling effects of authority. We crave to be certain, to be right, to be successful, to know, and this desire for certainty, for permanence, builds up within ourselves the authority of personal experience while outwardly it creates the authority of society, of the family, of religion, and so on. But merely to ignore authority, to shake off its outward symbols, is of very little significance. To break away from one tradition and conform to another, to leave this leader and follow that, is but a superficial gesture. If we are to be aware of the whole process of authority, if we are to see the inwardness of it, if we are to understand and transcend the desire for certainty, then we must have extensive awareness and insight. We must be free, not at the end, but at the beginning. Liberation from ignorance, from sorrow. We listen with hope and fear. We seek the light of another, but are not alertly passive to be able to understand. If the liberated seems to fulfill our desires, we accept him. If not, 
we continue our search for the one who will. What most of us desire is gratification at different levels. What is important is not how to recognize one who is liberated, but how to understand yourself. No authority here or hereafter can give you knowledge of yourself. Without self-knowledge, there is no liberation from ignorance, from sorrow. Why do we follow? Why do we accept? Why do we follow? We follow another's authority, another's experience, and then doubt it. This search for authority and its sequel, disillusionment, is a painful process for most of us. We blame or criticize the once accepted authority, the leader, the teacher, but we do not examine our own craving for an authority who can direct our conduct. Once we understand this craving, we shall comprehend the significance of doubt. Can I rely on my experience? Most of us are satisfied with authority because it gives us a continuity, a certainty, a sense of being protected. But a man who would understand the implications of this deep psychological revolution must be free of authority, must he not? He cannot look to any authority, whether of his own creation or imposed upon him by another. And is this possible? Is it possible for me not to rely on the authority of my own experience? Even when I have rejected all the outward expressions of authority, books, teachers, priests, churches, beliefs, I still have the feeling that at least I can rely on my own judgment, on my own experiences, on my own analysis. But can I rely on my experience, on my judgment, on my analysis? My experience is the result of my conditioning, just as yours is the result of your conditioning, is it not? I may have been brought up as a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Hindu, and my experience will depend on my cultural, economic, social, and religious background, just as yours will. And can I rely on that? Can I rely for guidance, for hope, for the vision which will give me faith in my own judgment, which again is the result of accumulated memories, experiences, the conditioning of the past meeting, the present? Now, when I have put all these questions to myself and I'm aware of this problem, I see there can only be one state in which reality, newness, can come into being, which brings about a revolution. That state is when the mind is completely empty of the past, when there is no analyzer, no experience, no judgment, no authority of any kind. Self-knowledge is a process. So to understand the innumerable problems that each one of us has, is it not essential that there be self-knowledge? And that is one of the most difficult things, self-awareness, which does not mean an isolation, a withdrawal. Obviously, to know oneself is essential, but to know oneself does not imply a withdrawal from relationship. And it would be a mistake, surely, to think that one can know oneself significantly, completely, fully, through isolation, through exclusion, or by going to some psychologist, or to some priest, or that one can learn self-knowledge through a book. Self-knowledge is obviously a process, not an end in itself. And to know oneself, one must be aware of oneself in action, which is relationship. You discover yourself not in isolation, not in withdrawal, but in relationship. In relationship to society, to your wife, your husband, your brother, to man. 
but to discover how you react, what your responses are, requires an extraordinary alertness of mind, a keenness of perception. The untethered mind. The transformation of the world is brought about by the transformation of oneself because the self is the product and a part of the total process of human existence. To transform oneself, self-knowledge is essential. Without knowing what you are, there is no basis for right thought. And without knowing yourself, there cannot be transformation. One must know oneself as one is, not as one wishes to be, which is merely an ideal and therefore fictitious, unreal. It is only that which is that can be transformed, not that which you wish to be. To know oneself as one is requires an extraordinary alertness of mind. Because what is, is constantly undergoing transformation, change, and to follow it swiftly, the mind must not be tethered to any particular dogma or belief, to any particular pattern of action. If you would follow anything, it is no good being tethered. To know yourself, there must be the awareness the alertness of mind in which there is freedom from all beliefs, from all idolization, because beliefs and ideals only give you a color, perverting true perception. If you want to know what you are, you cannot imagine or have belief in something which you're not. If I'm greedy, envious, violent, Merely having an ideal of non-violence, of non-greed, is of little value. The understanding of what you are, whatever it be, ugly or beautiful, wicked or mischievous, the understanding of what you are without distortion is the beginning of virtue. Virtue is essential for it gives freedom. Self-knowledge. Without self-knowledge, experience breeds illusion. With self-knowledge, experience, which is the response to challenge, does not leave a cumulative residue as memory. Self-knowledge is the discovery from moment to moment of the ways of the self, its intentions and pursuit its thoughts and appetites. There can never be your experience and my experience. The very term my experience indicates ignorance and the acceptance of illusion. For more information on Judah Krishnamurti and his teachings, please visit jkrishnamurti.org and kfoundation.org. Virtuous viewers, it was an honor to have your company for today's words of wisdom.